Good Muslim is the one who avoids harming the Muslims with his tongue and hands. Good Muslim is the one who avoids harming the Muslims with his tongue and hands. Good Muslim is the one who avoids harming the Muslims with his tongue and hands. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid Mursaleen Amma ba'ad fa'adhu billahi minu shaytani rajim Bismillahi rahmani rahim A salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulallah A salatu wa salamu alayka ya Habib Allah A salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nur Allah Dear viewers of Madani channel Welcome back to our program How a Muslim should be Inshallah in today's episode We will be speaking about such a beautiful topic That Alhamdulillah we do this on a daily basis And Inshallah we will be speaking about this And hopefully this will motivate us To Inshallah Azawajal Perform this action more on a daily basis Inshallah Azawajal And perform it with more passion but before we speak about this, let me mention to you as per usual a beautiful narration about the blessings of sending through the park peace and blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sayyidina Sheikh Muhammad bin Suleiman Juzuli rahmatullahi he writes that once I was traveling and the time of salah approached. Now I never had any water with me, so he say, sees that I seen a well. So I approached that well, but there was no bucket and there was no rope to get the water out from the well. So he's told, I'm anxious there, the time of Salah is going, and I'm not able to get this water out from this well. He mentions that a short while passed, and a young girl approached. And she said to me that, what are you doing here? I said to her that there's no bucket and there's no rope, and I need to perform wudu. She asked him that, who are you? What is your name? And he replied that, my name is Muhammad bin Suleiman Jazuli Rahmatullah Alayhi. She was surprised and she said, you are such a great personality. You have such a high rank amongst the community, amongst the people. But your state is such that you can't even get water out from this well. It's mentioned this young girl. What did she do? She spat into the water, uh, into the well. And it's mentioned that due to her spitting into the well, the water rose up to such an extent that it started to overflow from that well. Now, this great, uh, this great personality, he then performed wudu. He went to the young girl and he said that, tell me one thing. How did you achieve this rank? How did you perform such a great miracle? And you know what her response was? Her response was, Alhamdulillah, on a daily basis, I recite through the park in abundance upon the Prophet I send peace and blessings upon the Prophet in abundance. And by the blessings of me reciting through the park upon the Prophet I have achieved this rank. I have achieved this status. And I have performed this miracle in front of you. He mentions that, Alhamdulillah, impressed by the girl, he says that I made a firm intention on the spot to write a whole book on the blessings of Drood the Park upon the Prophet. So he says that I wrote the book about Drood the Park called the Lailul Khairat. So Alhamdulillah, this is available today. This is a whole book that will motivate you to send peace and blessings to recite Drood the Park upon the Prophet. But before I move forward, inshallah, this girl, she achieved this rank. How? She used to decide to rule the park upon the Prophet ﷺ in abundance. Today, my dear Islam brothers, unfortunately, we don't send peace and blessings. We don't recite through the park upon the Prophet ﷺ. We have so much opportunities to do so, but we don't. Our Prophet ﷺ, he would remember us. He would cry for us. He would shed his blessed tears for us. Today, we don't have time to remember him and send peace and blessings upon him. So make one intention, inshallah, azawajal, that you will recite through the park upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in abundance. Make an intention that at least 313 times you will send through the park upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Dear viewers of Madani channel, there are many benefits of performing wudu. Inshallah, in today's episode, I will be speaking about some of the benefits of performing wudu. I will be speaking about some of the benefits of remaining in the state of wudu. I will be speaking about some of the medical benefits. Yes, medical benefits. What science is proving today of the blessings of performing wudu inshallah azawajal. once Hazrat Usmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala is mentioned about him that once he told an individual that bring me some water so I can perform wudu so he's mentioned that individual went he bought some water and Hazrat Usmani Ghani radiallahu ta'ala he performed wudu at that particular spot then he smiled and he asked his companions who were with him at that time that do you know why I have smiled now before they even responded he responded himself, he answered the question himself. And he said, once the Prophet ﷺ at a particular spot, 
He performed his wudu and then he smiled. Then he asked his companions, Oh my companions, do you know why I smiled? Now before the companions of the Prophet ﷺ could respond, the Prophet ﷺ, he gave the answer himself. He said, Oh my companions, when a Muslim performs wudu, when he washes his hands by the blessings of performing wudu, Allah forgives the sins that the individual performed with his hands. When an individual washes his face whilst performing wudu, then the sins of his face are washed away. When an individual does masa of the head, the sins of the head are washed away. And when an individual washes his feet, the sins of his feet, they are washed away. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. 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 Dear viewers of Madani Channel, two things that I would like to speak about here. First of all, the Sahaba. Did you see how they used to love? They used to yearn to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Hazrat Usman Ghani radiyallahu anhu. He did exactly what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did. They used to love. They used to try to copy each and each action of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And today, we say we are ashik on Rasul. We say we are lovers of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We say we love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today we say that we can sacrifice everything upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But today, my dear Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani Channel, we can't follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We can't copy the lifestyle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We don't even move forward to follow the lifestyle of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. These were the Sahaba, the great companions. They would they would try to copy each and every action of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So my dear Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani Channel, may Allah Zawajal allow us, may Allah Zawajal give us this tawfiq to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the second point that I would like to mention from this narration of Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala. Look at the blessings, the benefits of performing wudu. That when you perform wudu, when we perform wudu, we wash our face, alhamdulillah, by the blessings of washing our face, the sins of our face are washed away. When we are washing our arms whilst we are performing wudu, the blessings, the benefits are that the sins of our arms are washed away, alhamdulillah. When we are doing masa of the head, when we are wiping the head, alhamdulillah, the sins of the head are washed away. And when we are washing our feet whilst performing wudu, the blessings are that the sins of the feet are washed away. First of all, look how beautiful Islam is. Look how easy it is. Look how much He wants to forgive us. That Alhamdulillah, we are performing ablution and we can get the forgiveness from Allah Azawajal. Look how beautiful it is. Look at this beautiful action of ablution, my dear respected Islamic brothers. And let me mention to you two beautiful sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has said that cleansiness is half of the faith. And number two, undoubtedly Islam is a neat and clean religion. So you also attain purity because the one who is neat and clean will enter paradise inshallah subhanallah that person will enter paradise inshallah and another beautiful narration of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has it usmani ghani radiallahu ta'ala no yes he says that i heard from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if anyone does complete wudu allah will forgive his previous and his future sins inshallah so you perform your wudu you complete your wudu, inshallah, Allah Azawajal, He will forgive your previous and your future sins, inshallah Azawajal. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. And my dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, whenever we go to the masjid five times a day, when we read our namaz, alhamdulillah, we perform wudu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself has said that the key to Jannah is the salah, is namaz. And the key to salah is the wudu, is the ablution. And in regards to wudu, alhamdulillah, is something that we do on a daily basis. But I want to mention one thing to you now. How we can increase our reward in wudu, inshallah, azawajal. Because we do this. How can we get more reward? How can we get more benefits? How can we get more blessings by performing wudu? One beautiful narration that I will mention in front of you. That is mentioned, once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said to Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala no, the O oh, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala no, when you make wudu, recite Bismillahi walhamdulillah, as the angels will continue to write good deeds for you as long as you are in the state of wudu. Now before I continue, <laughs> there's something that I want to mention here. Now you recited Bismillahi walhamdulillah before performing wudu. Now you performed wudu. Now you are sleeping. You are drinking. You are eating. You are driving, you are walking, you are going to work, you are coming back from work. You are going to college, you are coming back from college. You are going to university, you are coming back from university. You are going to your local shop to buy something. 
if you recite Bismillah walhamdulillah, as long as you are in the state of wudu, the angels will write good deeds for you. Meaning you are walking, you are getting good deeds. You are sleeping, you are getting good deeds. You are driving, you are getting good deeds. Alhamdulillah, you are eating, you are getting good, good deeds. Subhanallah, look how easy it is to get good deeds in Islam. Why is this? How easy it is before you perform your wudu next time. Each time you perform your wudu, one request, inshallah. Make one intention today, inshallah. Bismillah walhamdulillah. Bismillah walhamdulillah. You will recite this before performing wudu, inshallah, as long as you will remain in the state of wudu. The angels will write good deeds for you, inshallah. Subhanallah. And if anyone begins wudu by reciting Bismillah, his whole body from head to toe gets purified. So if someone starts their wudu without reciting Bismillah, then only those portions, meaning his face, his arms, his hands, his head and his feet, only they will get purified. But if you recite Bismillah before performing wudu, your whole body from head to toe will get purified, inshallah. So but there's such an easy action, such an easy way to get so much good deeds in return, such an easy way to get your whole body purified. Inshallah, I hope you will make this intention. Before you perform wudu, the next time you go to perform your wudu, Inshallah, you will recite Bismillah, Walhamdulillah, Inshallah, Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madini Shayam, and Alhamdulillah, we're talking about the blessings of wudu and performing wudu, Alhamdulillah. There's one request that I have. Whenever you perform your wudu, and later on when your wudu becomes invalid, it's my humble request to you that immediately, as soon as possible, try to make wudu again. Because there's many benefits of remaining in the state of wudu. Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala, the son, if you have the capability to remain in the state of wudu at all times, then do so. Because martyrdom is recorded for anyone who is in the state of wudu when his soul is removed by the angel of death. Meaning that when the angel of death will come to capture an individual soul. If that individual is in the state of wudu and his soul is captured at that time, inshallah, azawajal, martyrdom, that person will be recorded as a shaheed, inshallah. Azawajal. Subhanallah, look at the blessing, look at the reward. How is this possible? Inshallah, perform wudu. If your wudu when it eventually breaks, go and perform wudu again. Try to remain in the state of wudu at all times, inshallah. Azawajal. Let me mention this beautiful narration to you again. And the summary is that if you, your soul is captured by the angel of death in the state of wudu, you will be counted as a shaheed, inshallah. You will be counted as a martyr, and martyrdom will be written for you, inshallah. So easy. So make an intention, inshallah, that as long as possible for you, Try as, as much possible to remain in the state of wudu, inshallah. And remaining in the state of wudu, Allah Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnat, Imam Ahmad Rizahan, alayhi rahma. He has written that there are seven benefits of remaining in wudu at all times. Number one, the angels will be eager to accompany that person. So the person who always stays in the state of wudu is mentioned that the angels will be eager to accompany that person, inshallah. Subhanallah. Today you want this person with you, you want that person with you, you want the people to go with you. If you stay in the state of wudu, the angels will be eager to remain in your company. Number two, as long as you remain in the state of wudu, the holy pen will constantly write good deeds for that individual. Allahu Akbar. Like I said, you are drinking, you are eating, you are walking, you are driving, you are on the train, you are on the bus, you are at school, college, university, you are at your business place, you are at your job. If you are in the state of wudu, whilst you are doing all these actions, the holy pen will be writing good deeds for you, inshallah. So my dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madini channel, before I move on to the next points, please try to remain in the state of wudu. Number three, the person who remains in wudu at all times, his body parts will be do doing the tasbih of Allah. Alhamdulillah, we do tasbih of Allah today. We say subhanallah, we say alhamdulillah, we say Allahu Akbar. But if you remain in the state of wudu, inshallah, your body will be doing the tasbih of Allah. And number four, the individual who remains in the state of wudu at all times, he will never miss the first takbir of salah. Number five, when this individual sleeps, Allah Azawajal, he will send some angels to protect him from the evils of the jinns and the humans. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. And I think to yourself, there's one point that I would like to mention here in regards to sleeping. How long do you, uh, does a normal person sleep? Seven to eight hours, maybe nine hours a day a person sleeps. Before you sleep, my dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani Jannah, make one intention. Each, each night before you sleep, inshallah, you will go, you will perform wudu before sleeping. 
First of all, the benefits are that inshallah the whole night you are just sleeping, you are just resting, your body is resting. But the angels will be writing good deeds for you. And number two, inshallah azawajal, whilst you are asleep, these angels that Allah will appoint for you, these will protect you from the evils of the jinns and the humans inshallah. Look at the blessings. So my dear with this, make one intention here. Every night before sleeping, we will go, we will perform wudu, and then we will go to sleep inshallah azawajal. Number six, the person who remains in the state of wudu at all times, he will have an easy death inshallah. Allahu Akbar. Isn't this what we want today? Today we hear, especially on Madani channel in the Ishtimat of Dawat Islami, how much difficulties a person will have to go through when his soul is being captured by the angel of death. It's a very difficult time. It's a very hard time. But it's mentioned that if you remain in the state of wudu at all times, inshallah, that individual will have an easy death, inshallah. Azawajal. So may Allah azawajal, allow us to have an easy death. And number seven, the person who will remain in the state of wudu at all times, he will remain in the protection of Allah for as long as he is in the state of wudu. Allahu Akbar. So as long as you are in the state of wudu, you will remain in the protection of Allah, azawajal, inshallah. Azawajal. So may Allah azawajal, give us this enthusiasm, give us this passion to remain in the state of wudu, inshallah. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madani channel, towards the last part of our Silsila episode today, inshallah, I would like to mention some med medical benefits. Today, what science is telling us about the blessings of performing wudu, inshallah, on a daily basis. One individual, a doctor, he says that I treat a lot of patients who have depression. And I made some of my patients who have depression wash their faces five times a day. After some time, the illness this reduced. Then another, I made another batch of my patients who had depression. I made them perform wudu, meaning wash their face, wash their arms, do masa of the head, and wash their feet. And after some time, their illness gradually, alhamdulillah, to a very great extent, alhamdulillah, this reduced. Why? Because of performing wudu. So depression today is such a thing that many people in our community, many people in our society, many people in our areas are suffering from this. One solution of this could be if we perform wudu, inshallah, on a daily basis five times. And today another problem that we see many people suffering from is high blood pressure. A heart specialist has said very confidently that make a patient of high blood pressure perform wudu and then check his blood pressure you will see that it will be low inshallah azawajal. so this is another blessing of performing wudu and in regards to performing wudu what do we do first in wudu first of all we wash our hands let me tell you the, some of the benefits of washing your hands hands are used to touch many things and a result as a result different chemicals and substances and germs come in contact with the hands if the hands are not washed throughout the whole day this may cause skin infections such as eczema fungus infections etc etc when we wash the hands rays emit from our fingertips activating our internal system a part of which approaches our hands and causes beautification of the hands inshallah so this is one benefit of washing the hands on a regular basis in the day number two what do we do next after washing the hands we rinse our mouth let me tell you the benefits the medical benefits of rinsing the mouth countless dangerous germs and parts of food are stuck to our mouth and teeth with saliva if we do not clean our mouth in an excellent way by miswak and rinsing during wudu many dangerous diseases may develop for example fungal infections blisters in the mouth etc etc we can protect our ourselves from these dangerous diseases by rinsing our mouth during wudu by rinsing the mouth we can recognize the taste and the smell of the water we are using in order to know if it's harmful for our health likewise if we are not fasting we should also goggle as goggling along with rinsing the mouth is also a sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the one who goggles he regularly stays safe from many throat diseases tonsillitis and even throat cancer is mentioned that if you goggle on a regular basis you you will remain safe from throat cancer inshallah this is another benefit that alhamdulillah you have when you rinse your mouth then what do we do after we, we wash our hands we wash our mouth we goggle the water then we sniff water into the nose let me tell you some benefits of sniffing the water into the nose on a daily basis many times in the day when we breathe smoke dust and different types of germs they enter the nose through breathing sniffing water into the nose approximately 15 times a day 
during wudu can protect us from germs and dangerous disease caused by smoke. And for providing us with such air, Allah has blessed us with the blessing of a nose. By the virtue of putting water into the nose during wudu, we become safe from countless of diseases, inshallah. So we washed our hands, we've heard the benefits. We rinse our mouth, we've heard the benefits. We sniff the water, we've heard the benefits. Now what do we do? We wash our face. Let me tell you some blessings of washing the face whilst performing wudu. Um, if you move your hands three times on the face during the wudu, the brain feels relaxed, inshallah. The face also, also brightens and the skin grows soft. Smoke, dust, etc. are clean from the face. Comfort parts of the eyes and the eyes become beautiful, inshallah. According to a research carried out by some experts, washing the face has a good effect on the small intestine and the large intestine. Chest, which reduces eye diseases, weakness of the teeth, headaches, ner nervousness, etc. During the wudu, when the face is washed, the eyelashes are moist with water. And according to medical rules, by wetting the eyelashes, the possibilities of such, of such an eye diseases remain no more which can make a person lose his vision inshallah then after the face what do we do next we wash the arms including the elbows let me tell you some benefits of washing the arms three major veins in the elbow linked linked to the heart the liver and the brain as the arm is mostly covered and the time goes past without the arm being uncovered for air various mental and complications may arise arms are washed which strengthen the heart the liver and the brain so all muslims who do ablution on a daily basis. All those Muslims who regularly stay in the state of wudu, who do wudu on a regular basis in a day to, uh, during a day, it's mentioned that if you wash your arms in the state of wudu, this will strengthen your heart, this will strengthen your liver, and this will strengthen your brain, inshallah. The next thing that we do after washing the arms is the masa of the head, wiping the head. Head is the most important part of the body. The function of all the body parts are linked to the brain. And it's mentioned that by doing masa of the head and the neck, one stays safe from diseases developed due to the damage uh, in the backbone and the spinal cord, inshallah. Azawajal. So if you do masa of the head, inshallah, azawajal, you will remain safe from damage in the backbone and in the spinal cord, inshallah. Similarly, in the human body, the next thing that we do is wash our feet. This is the final part of wudu. Similarly, in the human body, the thing that can cover with dust the most is the foot. Infections normally start from the middle part of the toes, and diabetic patients suffer more from foot infections. Like palms of the soul is linked to the nerves, especially the glands. So by the virtue of washing the feet in the state of wudu, these patients have decreased appetite, feel relief from fever. They also refrain safe from nose bleeds, joint dish, joint pains, uh, etc. So if we wash our feet, this is the blessings of doing so. This is the medical benefits of washing the feet, inshallah. So why should we not perform wudu? Why should we not perform wudu on a daily basis? Why should we not perform wudu on a regular basis, inshallah? And another beautiful uh, medical benefit of performing wudu. You know, I've just mentioned to you the benefits of performing wudu. And you know, like I mentioned, first we wash our hands, then we rinse our mouth, rinse, uh, sniff the water into the nose, then we wash our face, wash the arms, do muscle of the head and wash the feet. This sequence, alhamdulillah, there are many medical benefits of doing this in this sequence, alhamdulillah, following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu One of the benefits is this sequence is useful in preventing paralysis, meaning when a person becomes paralyzed, this sequence can prevent that, inshallah. So these are some of the medical benefits of performing wudu inshallah medical benefits inshallah by performing wudu our sins are removed inshallah the angels will write good deeds for you so may Allah allow us to stay in the state of wudu let me remind you of the narration that I mentioned earlier the angel of death when he captures a soul of an individual who is in the state of wudu that person will be written as a martyr inshallah so make an intention that you will remain in the state of wudu. Inshallah, when the angel of death comes, inshallah, we will be in the state of wudu. He will capture our soul and we will be written as shaheed, inshallah. And in regards to the final point that I would like to put some emphasis on again, inshallah, whenever you perform your wudu, the final message of this episode today, whenever you perform your wudu, what will you say? Inshallah, you will, before performing your wudu, you will say, 
Bismillahi walhamdulillah. Let me repeat that one more time. Bismillahi walhamdulillah. As long as you are in the state of wudu, the angels will write good deeds for you, inshallah, as well as many other benefits, inshallah. So may Allah give us this passion, give us this enthusiasm to remain in the state of wudu. There's one final point that I would like to mention that today, unfortunately, where many people are far away from Islam, there's one misconception that today, brother, if I say the word pig, my wudu is broken. Remember, this is something that's made up. If you say the word pig, your wudu is not broken. So may Allah allow us to learn Islam. May Allah allow us to perform our wudu as soon as possible. Keep watching Madani channel. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Good Muslim is the one who avoids harming the Muslims with his tongue and hands. Good Muslim is the one who avoids harming the Muslims with his tongue and hands. Good Muslim is the one who avoids harming the Muslims with his tongue and hands.